So I feel like where you choose to live after you graduate says a lot about what you value as a person. Whether it's the Midwest suburb, Silicon Valley, or back in with your parents, they all say something about who you are. And I chose to live in NYC because what I value is constantly living in fear. Oh! George is black. I, I, I shouldn't be saying this because I got Jewish sponsorship. I'm raised in New York, bitch. The f are you from? Ohio? That's what I thought so. Shut the fuck up. I literally am from Ohio, yes. And I don't know what staying here means I value. But for a living here has only made me more scared. Like, I, being here has made me scared of uh, being broke. The cost of living here is disgustingly high. My rent uh, every month looks like a typo. It has made me afraid uh, to lose not just my money, but also my sanity. On Thanksgiving Day in the middle of Times Square, a dude who was peeing in a corner made and held direct eye contact with me for like a solid five seconds. And those five seconds were not the only thing that was solid, dear Lord. And it's made me afraid to lose uh, my life. But seriously, the city is looking to kill you at any moment. You could be hit in the head with random debris at any time. And I'm dead ass serious. There's actually a legal mandate that scaffolding stays up in New York City so debris can't hit people just walking around like it's real. And you'd figure that living in a city that I seem to not like would be against anyone's values. But on November 19th, the city of NYC hit me with something that court ordered scaffolding couldn't protect me from. Also, this isn't like some clever metaphor either. Like I actually got hit by something, like actually not. But oddly enough, all that kind of reminded me about why I came here in the first place. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I know. Okay, so November 19th, that date might sound familiar to some of you, as it is the first day of Anime NYC, which I shamelessly plugged in the last video, and on Twitter, where you should follow me, and on Instagram, where you should follow me, and on Discord, where you should follow Yeah, I'm, yeah sorry, I'm, I'm losing focus, my bad, sorry. You can do that later. Basically, if you follow cool social media accounts, you know that Anime NYC is an anime convention in, well, a NYC, it's in the name, yeah, obviously. And I was pretty hyped, not just because I gotta be a weeb, publicly but because all my friends both in the nyc area and outside of it were going to be around too which sounds like the perfect excuse to bring back an old con tradition a lot of friends going to a con wants to have fun we're going to throw the day zero party baby we are finally back after a three-year hiatus even though technically it would be on the first day of the con because the con actually started on the friday but whatever it's uh, day one baby we back after a just now happening hiatus i don't know it just felt good that we got to bring everyone together again after you know a year of hell so in order to get all my stuff set up for all my people it was going to be a busy day so i had to go to christians to start some light setup for the party and pick up something very very important which i had left the previous night then get to my friend mj's to drop off my stuff then go to the con which afterwards to lead us to being ridiculously drunk at day one later in the evening yeah got it good cool so a lot of traveling was involved now to get to the con in time and still have time to enjoy myself i had to leave the house at about now Now, in NYC, you're either taking the train or an Uber to get places. And the first option for most is the subway, which is for people who need to get to general locations going or coming from Manhattan to another borough quick. But the thing is that you can't get to certain other places within the same borough because white people in the early 1900s only cared about other white people getting to work. And, and, and that is not a joke. That is literally the reason why, like, I, I, have, I have cited right here. So the second option for people of NYC is Uber, which is for people who are unfortunate. I am unfortunate. See, I couldn't take the train to Christians because he didn't live on a line where white people worked in the 1900s. Plus at this point, I didn't have time for the train so all I could do was Uber. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is the first way the city would f me that day. See, in the city, there is no upsides to having to take an Uber, okay? No hyperbole, a toy car could be faster at some times, literally. Because NYC traffic is awful. Awful. Actually, honestly, honestly, I'm gonna derail this whole video real quick to just put you into perspective how f this is. So back in Ohio, a 16 mile trip is a little over, a little over 20 minutes and cost me like 30 bucks. Dog, an eight mile trip to Manhattan is 40 minutes and cost $55. My guy. Dog, I was sitting in that car fuming because I was going to be late and poor after this trip but it was all going to be worth it once i got to christians and got the important item i was going there for my electric scooter now okay y'all my scooter at least for me usually turns out to be the best option for transport in a city that 
sucks sometimes because it lets me go to more specific places than the train and a lot of time faster than the train and it's free but there isn't a vibe like putting in my earbuds and just riding with some music in it's sunflower it's sunflower in fact it was an idea i got put on to back when i spent some time with my friends in la and we would just ride and vibe to music and honestly that was like some of the best times of my life was being with my friends and having a blast they really made it worth it. Unlike this. I hate this thing sometimes, I swear to God. No, I eventually arrive at Christian's and homeboy can like see the death on my face as I pull up, but it was all cool because we were gonna get drunk in about 14 hours. So I was gonna forget this whole thing happened anyway. Which would lead to the second way the city would f me. Uh, all the drinks were ridiculously priced. Look, New York bodegas were already mad expensive, but Christian lived in a nice neighborhood. So that did not help. And even worse, nowhere in the neighborhood did they sell hard liquor. So unless I tried hard, I was gonna have to be an anime fan sober that night. And so were all of my friends. Which would not make it as cool of a party, but it was okay. So we're getting together so after that whole thing i get on my scooter and start heading to manhattan now i'm a little frustrated but i'm shrewd all right although the trip had some unexpected turns like that nyc wind chill man Oof. the city was really beating my ass uh, that day but the thing is that my ass was about to get beat just a little bit more. A few hours later, I'm in the bike lane, scooting straight ahead between a row of parked cars. Now there is a turn into some parking area coming up, but naturally everything should be good. Me saying that, obviously it won't be. So I have the right of way and I'm good to keep proceeding straight. Now, as I start coming up to this entrance, a car moving at some crazy speed, swerves directly into the bike lane, trying to get into the area across from me, right? Where I'm about to be in about 0.7 seconds. Ah, and there it is, ladies and gentlemen. F number three, that's, we love to see it. I'm moving at bullet time. At the trajectory of everything here, looking at this thing, I'm gonna expire like milk. This felt like it was it. The car was coming right at me. I saw my light flash before my eyes. Man, this city really wants me dead, all right. But in the moment of panic, I do see two options. Option one, swerve to the left of the car, possibly avoiding it, but probably getting like critically hurt in the process. Or option two, um, a slightly less preferable, die. Needs to say I went with option one. So I like take a quarter of a breath and zoop, swerve right left. And the car hits the brakes. My scooter skids down and I go down straight towards the back of the tire. Everything is black for a solid three seconds. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I was in such a hurry. I check myself and I'm okay. My shoulder hurts a bit, but no, I'm okay. Yo, after doing the damage report, I was like good. I think I'm just happy I can still do what I got to do for everyone. And that I'm still alive. I sit there for a second, I tell the lady it's fine, and just hop back on my scoot. But yo, this city sucks. <laughs> now, as I continue scooting to get to MJ's, that shoulder I was talking about like a little bit ago, that was just hurting a little bit, starts to throb a bit more. I'm like, hmm, that's a, that's definitely not a normal feeling. As I keep getting close to MJ's, it starts to hurt a bit more. Like there was a giant weight on my left shoulder, and the more and more I try and move it, it doesn't, to the point where, Okay, my arm can't move. Yo, I would not move at all. Like, ah, dog, I'm scared. It felt like I had a dead weight on my left arm. Like, yo, I didn't die, but like my left arm did. It was out of commission. So I'm kind of scared and I need help. At this point, the only person I can turn to though is MJ. So I pull up to his apartment, basically leaning on my far left. He opens the door is just like, oh, hey, what's up, man? Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, whatever, dog, uh, my arm can't move. What? My arm died. Bro, I go into MJ's apartment, uh, take off my shirt somehow and look in the mirror and I can see the bone protruding out of my shoulder. Yo, my shoulder was on my elbow, bro. My sh looked like it was taking a nap. My shoulder looked like it just got out of a fight with Android 18. My sh was off the hinges, my guy. It was dislocated, like then a mother Now naturally, 
I panicked. I have a ton of stuff to do today. Fun plans, great plans with people I wanted to hang out with. And the city just hit me with another L. It was supposed to be fun. We're gonna get wild tonight. I don't know if that's possible like this. Am I supposed to go to the hospital? Do Am I gonna just have to step away from the whole con? Cause my whole arm is decapitated. It just felt like the whole city was against me at this point. I had given up for a couple seconds at least. Look in the mirror, knowing why I was doing all this. There's a lot of people I'd be letting down if I didn't go. Friends who wanted to see me, who were the whole reason I still kept going after all those L's. So, I made a decision. MJ, you're gonna have to pop my shoulder back into place. What? Me and MJ end up going online to find clips of how to put a shoulder back into place. Oddly enough, the only one that was helpful was a bunch of frat bros popping in their friend's shoulder. Yeah, this is the one. I lay on the ground, arms spread like a T-pose, as the rednecks in the video instructed. And MJ puts his foot on my neck and pulls my arm. Now, there's something about your friend's whole foot being put on your breathing pipe that makes you really reflect about what's got you here. Kind of puts things into perspective. Like, I'm really here trying to salvage a serious injury just so I can hang out with people. Despite all these L's I've taken, I still want to keep going. And... I think I know why. Sure, NYC was over my ass. Like in every possible way. But the reason I was here wasn't necessarily because of the city. Every L I took today was so we could all have a fun time tonight. It was all for my people, for them. Like the dude putting his foot on my neck. As aggressive as this is, this is actually a very big positive. I came here to be with my friends, to work with them and to grow with them, celebrate. The connections I had are what made me want to stay. Even me getting the scooter in the first place was because of hanging out with friends in LA and that resonated with me so much. I don't know, in that moment, just sitting there, getting my arm pulled off, I just thought, really, the reason I'm here, the reason I moved is because of my connections. That's what that says about me. I value my friends and my loop. And that's why I'm here. Ah! And just like that, MJ popped my shoulder back into place. And it felt all right. I appreciate him for that, honestly. So I ended up going to the con. And then although my shoulder was aching, I had a lot of fun. Met up with the people waiting for me and had a blast at day one. All in all, I guess everyone does have a reason for going somewhere, whether it be for money or status or just aspiring for a certain way of life. But mine necessarily wasn't for that kind of stuff. Not to say NYC itself doesn't have its highlights because in truth, I do love the city. But what I valued was the connections here. Because really, if all my friends live back in Ohio, I'd probably have a good time there too. So, food for thought. So scooting through New York might occasionally uh, be deadly, but at least I'd be listening to some fantastic tunes while almost dying with this video sponsor, Raycon. Honestly, there's nothing like going outside for me on a good scoot with my earbuds. Like that is heaven. So when I get to accent them with my Raycons and their premium quality sound, mm, I just be scooting through the city, singing those tunes, and sure, my voice quality isn't good, but at least the quality of what I'm listening to is thanks to my Raycon. So the new everyday earbuds offer an improved rubber oil look and feel. Homeboys are slick, honestly. They're like really smooth. I'm touching them right now. And the optimized gel tips give you the perfect in-ear fit. Raycons offer eight hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. There's also a built-in mic and you can take calls at the press of a button. And Raycons start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. Not to mention Raycons come with a 45 day happiness guarantee. So if you're not messing with them, it's cool. You can give them back and get all your money back. So I don't see the problem. So here. if you want a nice fancy pair of Raycons, click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com for says Kurt Ritchie and use code HOLIDAY to get 15% off site-wide. Once again, click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com for it says Kurt Ritchie and use code HOLIDAY to get 15% off site-wide. Thanks again, Raycon, for sponsoring this video.